before I discuss the sixth nerve palsy, remember the sixth nerve, the lateral lactus is at the nucleus is at the level of pons. I forgot to tell you about the fourth nerve nucleus. So remember here, please write it in your notes that the fourth nerve nucleus is at the level of inferior colliculus. I already told you that the third nerve nucleus is at the level of superior colliculus. Okay, so these can be your questions in your exams. And as you all know, the superior rectus basically, sorry, the sixth nerve supplies the lateral rectus. Okay, so whenever there is a sixth nerve palsy, the damage would be in the lateral rectus. The patient would come with a paralytic squint. Now, the lateral rectus is not act basically acting. What is acting is the third nerve and the superior oblique. So what the third nerve can do is that third nerve basically can cause a medial movement of the eye, a medial squint of the eye. So there can be in the long standing cases, esotropia. Okay, like I told you there can be an exo in the third nerve palsy. So opposite to that, in the sixth nerve palsy, there can be the eso. The mechanism would be same. The unrestricted action of the third nerve muscles would cause a bit of eso in these cases. Also, as this is the paralytic squint, so all the features of a paralytic squint, like a diplopia, like a pass pointing, would be here. And the secondary image, the second image that is formed in these patients would be further far away from the image that is the real image okay so the pass pointing would be further far away from the real image so these are some important clinical features of a six nerve palsy now you would see a six nerve palsy nine gaze photo like this so this is a patient now you can see in this patient this eye is not moving laterally okay so all other actions are there but this is not moving laterally. So this is my lateral rectus palsy. So these nine gazes and the various gazes, the head tilt. So whenever they talk about the head tilt, think about your superior oblique. Whenever they see, you see that the eye is not moving laterally, think about the sixth nerve palsy. Whenever you are seeing stosis, think about the third nerve palsy. And also remember that in the lateral rectus palsy, there would be a pass pointing and the pass pointing would be like this that the image would be formed further away from the image that is already there. So these are some important points that you should remember regarding a lateral rectus palsy. So when I talked about the action of the superior oblique, remember I told you that superior oblique is having this action. So first of all, it is a intorter. Okay, so this is my intorsion. It moves the globe, the central topmost point of the center of the cornea towards the nose. So it is an intorter. It is a depressor. Remember, the major depressor is your inferior rectus and it is your abductor. So if there is a superior oblique palsy, then these actions would be impaired. So instead of intorsion, the patient would be having an extorsion. Okay, the opposite of intorsion, the eye would move in the opposite direction. Instead of depression, because the depression is now not there, so there would be a slightly elevation, so there would be a hypertropia. And instead of the abduction, there would be adduction. Okay, so these are all opposite to the actions of your superior oblique. That would be now the major action. Okay, so how the eye would look like? The eye would look like something like this. Now, let's say this is a patient having a right superior oblique palsy. Now, what are the various things that you have to notice here? So, first thing that you note here is that we have done the head tilt. So, these are two positions. This is my primary gaze. This is my face turn. This is my face turn. And this is my head tilt. Okay, this is my head tilt. So patient has done the head tilt and you can see that here the right eye, this is going up. 
the right eye is going up how much up it is there you can just see that these points the green points that i have taken here so this is the distance which the eye has gone up okay so there is a hypertropia here okay so now this is my right face turn similarly i have done a left face turn okay so in left face turn you can see that still the eye has gone up but this eye has gone up less as compared to this portion okay so the hypertropia is less in the left face turn as compared to the right face turn so here comes a very important feature in these patients that there can be a head tilt head tilt is because these patients have the problem in superior oblique which is having the vertical action as well as horizontal action these patients would have a head tilt and if there is a right superior oblique palsy as i have shown you here in right superior oblique palsy the hypertropia is more in the right head tilt as compared to left head tilt okay so the patient would have more diplopia because more is the squint more is the amount of diplopia more diplopia in right head tilt as compared to left head tilt okay this is the one portion so patient would always prefer that maneuver where he has less amount of diplopia so patient would prefer left head tilt so opposite head tilt patient would prefer okay this is the first thing now second thing is that the patient would in these patients they are worse diplopia on opposite gaze Now what it means that let's say the patient is having a right side superior oblique palsy. So this is my gaze. Okay, I am looking here. This is my opposite gaze. So this is my same side gaze. This is my opposite gaze. So the patient is having diplopia worse on opposite gaze. Okay, so this is so right superior oblique palsy patients would have more diplopia. on left gaze okay so the mnemonic here is boot and woog better on opposite tilt and worse on opposite gaze so the right side superior oblique palsy patient would present with left side head tilt okay patient would come with the torsional diplopia and the left head tilt because the right superior oblique palsy the patient have more diplopia in the right side head tilt okay so patient would prefer a left head tilt there so that is how you can have different questions on superior oblique palsy so please remember the mnemonic boot and woo regarding the what would be the position of the head in these patients